certainly glad they decided to do something about the story, really. It was very good, but it took me so long to get there. It wasn't really good. You try. That's all. That's the only thing you can really be certain. Yeah, but is he? Are you sure he's coming? He'll be here, Sid. Just cool it. When he does get here, don't start right in talking business. Okay, okay. Just let Mike relax. This is just to get to know each other. Well, sure, sure. But we can still make a deal. Of course. But let him bring it up. Trust me, okay? Right. And uh, another thing, don't. Uh, don't start that stuff about I'm just a country boy. <laughs> but I am. <laughs> I know. But when you talk like that, you sound like anything but a country boy. <laughs> Will you excuse me a moment, please? You pay that man, Sid. Why do you let him talk to you like that? The how's okay. He's the one who got my cravat to come here, didn't he? Mm, not yet, he hasn't. Oh, yes, he has. All right. Glad you could make it. Well, I oh, yeah? thought Mr. Cravat was just bringing his wife. Who's that man with him? That's a bodyguard. Sid, who is my Cravat? He's a man I'm going to do business with. What kind of business are you going to be doing with a man who needs a bodyguard? A big business. Now, what we have now is nothing compared to what we're going to have with my Cravat. Nothing. Sid, I don't want I'm you to... Dorothy, for God's sakes, take one of them Valiums and shut up. Sid, I'd like to Sid see Sid Ballinger. And, uh, Sid Ballinger. And this doll would be Mrs. Cravat. Hey, Mike, I got, a, I got a whole case of that scotch that Hal tells me you're so nuts about. Hey, boy. Boy. For God's sake, straighten up. Look at your tray. Always keep a full tray. Now, this is my wife, Dorothy. Mr. and Mrs. Cravat. Well, how nice hey, Mike, I know how you take that scotch. Straight, right? When Hal fills you in on a guy, he really fills you in. How about you, Mrs. Cravat? Uh, with a little water, please. On a double, boy. Uh, and tell the bartender to get that special bottle under the bar. Huh? I'll take care of it. Certainly. I can't tell you how eager I have been to meet you, Mike. But I heard a lot about your organization. I don't mind telling you I'm impressed. I'm glad. You know what impressed me, Mike? What impressed you? Muscle. It's the only thing that counts. I learned that in the Army. 21 years. Retired Master Sergeant. Yeah, Hal told me. It's, uh, PXs, right? Huh? Right. I'm glad you brought that up. Now, I know we're here to socialize. But I'm just a country boy. I like to get right to the point. What point would that be, Mr. Ballinger? Now, the point, Mike, is that the military buys and sells billions each year on simple, everyday commodities. Now, you understand? Yeah, I think I can grasp that. OK. Now, you take my PX contacts in Asia and Europe, and you add a little muscle on the distribution end, and I'm telling you, Mike, it's a license to print money. Beautiful out here, isn't it? I, uh, I don't think your friend wants to talk about the weather or the view. I think he wants to talk business. <laughs> you were right, Hal. My cravat don't beat about the bush. That's right, Mr. Ballinger. So please don't be offended if I say that I do business with people I know. I don't know you. But Hal knows me. Hal can tell you I operate straight. You pay Hal to tell me things like that. That's true enough, Mike. But when I sell somebody, that's a business deal for me. And I only do business with people I know. I learned that from you. Ivy, you're so slippery I could drill you for oil. <laughs> Money, money, give it to me, money. Oh my God, my God, you're being mad. 
Just shut up, all of you, shut up! Shut oh, up. no! No, don't you do that. Can't you see he's a drug addict? Shut up, Dorothy! You just hold on one minute, boy. Oh, you put your hands up! You stop or I'll shoot! Now listen, you little spook. Blouser. I think we ought to do what the man says. That's right. You just might be next. All right, throw your money on the floor. Come on. All of it. All of you. OK, that's enough. You count it. You count and give me a 1,000. Get down there and count it, I said. Me? Get down on my knees to you? Sidney, will you do what he wants? Look, I don't want to kill you, mister, but I will. No, 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 don't you shoot. I'll, I'll do what you want. I'll do it. I'll you do ain't nearly to him. Please, you got Get off here. You asked for it, mister. Do what he says, Ballinger. Count it. Count it, Ballinger. Count it. One hundred, two hundred, fifty, three hundred, twenty, thirty, fifty, four fifty, five fifty, seven fifty. You can stop when you get to a thousand. Keep going, Valentine. Eight, eight fifty, nine. One thousand. That's enough. I'm going to kill him. Regular kid, Davy, uh, Davy something. I'll get you the name. Nicest kid you ever wanted to meet. I mean, polite, no back talk, nice, you know? He's sick. He can't make it. I mean, he's got this, he's got that. What am I supposed to do? I mean, this is a big party. These people need service. So this regular kid, Davy, he's got a friend. The friend says he can do it. I said yes. <laughs> what am I, a mind reader? I should know the friend is a crazy. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. You mean you hired a substitute without knowing his name? Look, I give a kid a break. Is that a crime? Be a liberal. Hire these kids. Look where it gets you. Look, uh, we got three kinds of appetizers. A Swedish meatballs mm -hmm. for your hot, chopped liver for your cold yeah, potato salad. Fine. Here. Here, uh, take a bite. Try oh, it. Thanks. Not hungry. Well, look, uh, take some sandwiches home. What do you want? What no. do you like? Uh, ham? We got uh, turkey? Uh, I don't want anything. Look, I can't be responsible. Ah, uh, Dan Vatican. How are you? Boris Cravat. Ah, uh, Dan. Mike and his wife were called away. A business emergency, you understand. But I can speak for him. <laughs> it's just some crazy kid. Mike will be sorry he missed you. Yeah. I'll bet. Dan, uh, who's this Ballinger? Lovely couple. The party was just going great when this kid pulled a gun. <laughs> What's the world coming to, huh? Who is he? Oh, well. Uh, Sid. Sid, can you come here a minute? I got it. Here. Yeah, huh? I got it. I got the name. Oh. David Epps. That's his name, David Epps. The substitute? No, no, the regular kid, the one who called in sick. I got it right here. I got oh. it in my office. Oh. Okay, okay. Thanks. Great food, but lousy service. Oh, good. Uh, Sid Ballinger, Sergeant Dan Madigan. Just what kind of city you running here? Well, I don't run it. I just work here. I'm sorry about all this, Mr. Ballinger. I don't want your sympathy. Oh. All right. So you're coming up in the world, Hal. What does that mean? Well, there was a time when Hal Ivey's parties definitely did not include wives. You find something funny about this? Yeah, I do. 
You see, we're not used to having people like Hal Ivey and Mike Cravat call us. You know him? We're all friends. You don't sound so friendly to me. <laughs> you gonna get that little nigger? That's what I'm paid for, Mr. Ballinger. Hey, Smoke. Hey, man. Hey, Billy. How you doing, man? Fine. Doing just fine, man. Hey, how'd you get in here, man? I just told him I was 19. Plus, I got a driver's license to prove it. <laughs> driver's license, huh? Hey, now all you need is a car. That's next. Hey, how's Clara? She's doing just fine, man. I got a knock for you. Oh, you do, huh? Hey, you got what knock for me? For the lawyer, the dude that's gonna get you out. I got the bread for the lawyer. And you got a thousand? I, you got a thousand bucks? Every penny of it. Maybe you got a license to say you're 19 years old, but you ain't got no grand. A thousand? I gave it to Clara to give it to the lawyer. We're gonna be playing ball by tomorrow night. Hey, where'd you get a grand? I said, how'd you get a grand, man? I hit a number, man. A jackpot? You ain't got a quarter to play a number. Somebody's got to win it. I hit it. See you on the outside. Billy! Hey, Billy! Fellas, I'm looking for Davy Epps. Which one of you is Davy Epps? Who owns the ball? It's my ball. Can I see it? You're Davy Epps. Who says so? Initials D.E. Could be Duke Ellington, but I figure it's Davy Epps. You're a regular Sherlock Holmes, ain't you? Uh-huh. You a cop? Yeah. Why didn't you go to work yesterday, Davy? Oh. Maybe we better go downtown and talk. For not going to work, get out. No. For being an accomplice and a stick-up. I was playing ball here all day and half the night. We played till 11 o'clock. I got witnesses. Your friend pulled a gun on a dinner party. Not me, man. He, he didn't say anything about nothing like that. Hey, man, he shoved a gun in my face and says, you ain't going to work today. What am I supposed to do? Who is your friend, Davy? He ain't my friend. I don't even know him. What'd I have to go downtown for? I didn't do nothing. Well, maybe we won't have to. Who is he? I only seen him a couple of times is all. He was all the time asking about my job, about the parties. What's his name? Billy. Billy what? I don't know, just Billy. He's been hanging around here for a week, playing a little ball. That's all I know. All right, come on. We'll talk it over downtown. That's all I know. I'm telling you, that's all I know. Ain't nothing more to talk about. Well, he was all the time talking about this brother of his, Smokey. All the time, Smokey this and Smokey that. He was some kind of player. You ever see this Smokey? He kept that Smokey jam up all the time. It's like Smokey was a regular Frazier and Chamberlain and Jabal mixed into one. Real athlete, huh? Hey, man. I didn't know nothing about all this until now. I got a job, and I'm going back to school. Don't mess me up. OK, Davey. I won't mess you up. Thanks very much. On the ball. Uh. Yeah, will you tell Mr. Cravat that Mr. Ballinger called? Again. Now, he's ducking me, Hal. Now, how do you like that? Messed up by a punk nigger. I'm sure Mike doesn't hold it against you. He comes here for a meal and gets a gun stuck in his face. I'm sure Mike understands. Now, this may blow the deal with Cravat, but I'm going to get satisfaction. Look, Sid, 
Mike lost about a hundred bucks. Make out a check and I'll take it over to him. That don't make me feel any better. They all saw me down on my knees to that... that... Sid, I just want to let this thing get obsessive. Well, there is something. Uh, maybe I could get a, some satisfaction and... Might even maybe be able to make this thing work for me. What are you getting at? Now, Cravat understands muscle. Now, if he was out to get somebody, he'd use muscle. Why can't I? Sid. I want to step on this kid. Personally, are you going to help me, or do I hire me another boy? I can get you anything you want, and you get me some muscle. This kid is probably holed up in Harlem somewhere. You take... You take black muscle to dig him out. Why not? I ain't prejudiced. Sid. Good morning, everybody. Now, who's for a little breakfast, hmm? Thanks, I was just leaving. You get it. Today. Sure. Sure, sir. What is the matter with him? Shut up. Dorothy. Smokey? Smokey? Yeah, I got a message for him. You got any change, Mr. Smokey? Yeah, I need to see him. Oh, you mean Smokey? That's right. Hey, man, we don't know no Smokey. No, no. Don't know no Smokey. Thanks a lot. Clean here. Both track betting took it all. Nobody messes with the numbers. Uh huh. Go catch the junkies. I'm just trying to make an honest living. I'm looking for Smokey. I got a clean place. I'm starving to death. What do you come around here for? You seen Smokey around? Who's that? Smokey, you know him? This guy'll tell you something. In this neighborhood, to me, they're all Smokey. Okay. Okay, Wally. Can you recommend somebody? No. No, money is no object. Within reason. But it's got to be good. And, and it's got to be black. Charlie? I'm looking for a Mr. Blue. Must be him. Mr. Blue? I'm Hal Ivey. Yes. Just sit down. I recommend the sangria. Wally filled me in. There are some details, of course. Of course. This is Kraft, my confidant. Wally speaks very highly of you. Dear Wally. An associate of mine is most interested in utilizing your services. I am delighted. At the moment, as they say in the theater, I'm quite available. Frankly, I prefer to discuss this matter in a little more privacy. Mm, I quite understand. And your associate, I dare say he prefers to remain incognito. As a matter of fact, he insists on meeting you. How refreshing. Perhaps he can provide us with privacy. Yes, of course he can. He's waiting now. After lunch, Mr. Ivy. Call me Hal. Splendid, Hal. And you can call me Mr. Blue.
I don't know if you've seen Smokey. <laughs> Where is Smokey? <laughs> the man on the dope on a brother called Smoke, but Smokey! job done fast and I want it done right. I wouldn't have it any other way. And if you don't mind, I'll take half payment now as a retainer and as a general show of good faith. So it's done, Sid. Trust you, Sid. I trust he knows how to count. <laughs> then how are you going to find this kid? If Sergeant Madigan is looking for this kid, then I'll just look for Sergeant Madigan. You know Madigan, huh? We are acquainted with each other's work. Well, what if Madigan can't find the kid? If he can't, then there are other ways. Look, I don't care how you do it. You just find the boy and take care of him. Mr. Ballinger, I always fulfill a contract. Your brother's in real trouble, Smokey. He's still a juvenile. If I can find him before he gets in any deeper, it might not be too rough a rap. Well, you must have some idea where he'd be. Guess you hate cops more than you love your brother, huh, Smokey? Mrs. Fix one of these days. Look, Smokey's already in jail. Now, you could try, but you can't put him in two times at once. Yeah, I know he's in jail. I just had a talk with him. Well, I didn't do nothing except try to get on welfare. Is that a crime these days? <laughs> oh, now, look what you're doing. I want to talk to you about Billy. Billy? Well, he's just a baby. He didn't do nothing. How did you get here? What are you doing around here, anyway? He held up a dinner party yesterday. Ah, oh, come on, man. How could he get into a dinner party? As a busboy. He couldn't do nothing like that. Look, Billy ain't got no folks. All he got is Smokey, and Smokey know it. Now, Smokey ain't no good, but he keep Billy clean. Well, you look out in the street, you see all those creeps and junkies, but you don't see Billy. He ain't never been near any kind of trouble like that. Not Billy. You gotta believe me, mister. You gotta believe me. He took a thousand dollars. You did it for Smokey. What do you mean? A thousand dollars. There's this lawyer that can get him out, but it costs a thousand dollars. Mrs. Fix. Look, I told you I ain't Mrs. Fix. I'm going to be, but I ain't yet. All right, I'm sorry. Look, Billy's roaming around out there with a gun. There's a warrant out for his arrest. Where is he? I don't know. Look, 
If the people get the money back, will that help? I don't know, maybe. But this is armed robbery. It's not like he broke a window or something. He can't just apologize. He told me he hit a number. That's how he got it. Some number. It's all there, exactly 1,000. Where's the boy? I don't know. You're covering for him. If I were, I'd have kept the money. Whoever well, gave you that knows where the boy is. No, I don't think so. I tell you what. You go buy yourself a new hat and bring the boy to me. We'll get him, but he won't be brought to you. He'll be brought to trial. Don't make me laugh. From what I heard about your fair city, those little black fellas beat the rap all the time. A lot of little fellas beat the rap, Mr. Bounder. Black and white. I'd like a receipt for the money. You fellas look scared of them, aren't you? I'll take that receipt and be on my way, if you don't mind. You'd probably like me to donate this to them Black Panthers. Oh, no, sir. Most of that money belongs to your guests. I'm sure you'll return it to them. Thanks. Much. You gave it back. You gave it back. You took some pig jive and give it back? What you doing with a gun? Billy, Billy, they'll put you away so long you never even see Smokey. I'll never see you. What'd he tell you? He let me off in Smokey Hill? That what he tell you? No, no! I'll be spending that thousand dollars right now. That pig, the dude in that hat, I know. He's looking around for me. Now look, don't you go following no cops. You just hide out for a little while and everything's gonna be okay. You understand? I'm gonna get Smokey out. It's playing more thousand dollars and I still got the gun. I know to get money now. Billy! Billy! Ah, I perceive you have flushed out our quarry. Huh? You've found Madigan. Oh, yeah, but he ain't found no kid yet. But you know where Madigan was? Being a cop, I presume he was at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Now, where was he, you cretin? He was at Clara Fix's house. Clara... You don't suppose that our young desperado is Timothy Fix's kid brother? Betcha. Betcha it was, uh, Billy Fix. Well, well. Craft, my boy, this is one of those rare times we can mix business with pleasure. Okay, thanks, Robert. Did you give back the money like you said? Yeah, but the guy wants Billy. Why? Well, I just think it's better if I get to Billy first. Where is he? I don't know. He came back after you left, and I told him that you took the money, and he didn't want to listen to nothing I had to say, so he ran off. Where? I don't know where. He just hit the streets. That's all I know. It doesn't give me much to go on. Look, I'll help you. Oh. You and me. We'll find him. You and me, uh, Clara? You mean we're gonna search Harlem? Why not? Well, you'd be better off with a black detective. <laughs> but I got an investment in you. thousand dollars. Well, Harlem's a closed shop to me. Yeah, well, I'll open the doors. You just walk through them. Yeah? Mm -hmm. 
Well, I've got to have a partner. I guess it better be you. Let's go. There, there's the cat I want. Is that his car or his apartment? That's a rubber band. You wait here a minute. I think this kid's gonna show up here. No. But the great white hunter is. And when he does, he'll leave and we'll be right behind him until we find little Billy. You know, I think when you see that kid, you'll be looking at his big brother, big old Smokey. That's who you'd really like to get at. Common street trash. Your scars are showing. If I can even things with Smokey, why not? Hmm? On top of old Smokey, all covered with snow, I lost my poor lover for calling too slow. If you sing one more chorus of that, I'll make you a soprano. Oh, promises, promises. Hey, Gloria. How are you doing, girl? Boots, this is Madigan. Hiya, Boots. Are we gonna have trouble, you and me? No, no, I'm just looking for Billy Fix. Yeah, I got the word. Rubber band says I should help you. That's a first. Yeah, well, he owes me one. Well, you just found Billy. He's at my pad. He's a good kid. He even helps wash the dishes. Where's your pad? You got a pencil? Yeah. Is he there now? Probably. He splits when I bring company home. He's a good kid. Here's the address. Oh, thanks a lot. Man, why don't you use your pull and get old Smokey out? Well, I didn't put old Smokey in. Are you and Rob gonna get back together again? No chance, baby, no chance. It's your life. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> well, uh, gotta get snapping. Thanks, Boots. Yeah, thanks a lot, baby. Working again, eh, Boots? Officer. Yeah. She's undercover. Sorry, Sergeant. Okay. Thanks. Don't mention it. And I mean, don't mention it. <laughs> Thanks again, Boots.
I don't know whether I want to go to Miami or Vegas. Cheap. Trashy and cheap. All right. That's what I want. Trashy and cheap. Kraft. And the money from this one. The spoils. The filthy lucre. I will take you to Monte Carlo. To the Hotel du Paris. Uh-uh. We have visitors. We have company. Well, now. If it's not Romeo and Juliet, <laughs> we'll just have to see the Smokey is informed that Clara Bird is unusually busy when Daddy's away. Juliet's gone home. Yeah, and I'll just bet that Romeo has a line on Billy Boy. It's time to come out now. Clara's waiting for you. Who is that? Now look, the only way you're gonna help Smokey is to come out. Billy, there's six police cars out front. And cops on the fire escape. So you open the door, give me your gun, and come on out. They're gonna toss tear gas in there. All you're gonna do is wreck Boots' apartment and get yourself suffocated. Now, come on out. You the guy who took Smokey's money. I don't believe you. Well, you better believe me. A lot of these guys are trigger happy. They'll start shooting. You'll never be able to help Smokey. Come on. <laughs> About 15. In the leg, lower calf, I think. No, no, definitely bullet wounds. Look, lady, I don't want to buy him. I just want to know if he's in your damn hospital. Hello. 
Hello. She hung up on me. Just soft, gentle voice. Inspired confidence. Yeah. Who was the trigger man? You know Roscoe Blue? You mean the Prince of Wales? Yeah. How could anybody be crazy enough to put out a contract on a kid? How long you been black? Hmm. What kind of a guy is this Ballinger? That kind. Now, wait a minute. Roscoe Blue is black. Well, maybe Ballinger doesn't think he's prejudiced. Got enough metal in here to open a junkyard. I feel like a junkyard. You can't pay me, which is a safe bet. We can always try to sell this lead. You can keep it. Thanks. If they ever made gold bullets, I'd be a millionaire. Hey, Florence Nightingale, flap on over here. brought your brother here once. Fix. Billy Fix. Do we have anything resembling a clean bandage around here? They're right next to you where they should be. Oh. I was just testing you. Oh, did I pass? Yep. You're promoted to head nurse. Looks like you're gonna wind up just like your brother. Now, do I have to listen to that? I'm afraid so. All I've got is a local anesthesia. What'd you do to get yourself shot? Cops say come out. Said they wouldn't shoot. I'll never listen to that job again. This ain't no cops bullet soldier. It's gotta be. 32 caliber automatic. Cops don't use them. Well, they do now. Nope. I'll stake my professional reputation and my Nobel Prize on it. He knows a lot about bullets. Who's been shooting at you? That cop. He done it. Your logic is overwhelming. You have to come back in a week to have this dressing change, you know. That, too. I don't have any money. What a surprise. My brother Smokey. He'll pay you when he gets out. Smokey? As I recall, I took a knife out of him. What do you two do? Nothing. There. Take two aspirin, go to the south of France for three weeks, and you'll be fine. He'll pay you when he gets out. Yeah. We'll be back in a week. Thanks. I don't need no help. A born dancer. Next. Oh. Now, if Doc says that wasn't a police bullet, then it wasn't. It don't matter no more. It does if somebody's shooting at you. I'm gonna leave town. You're gonna walk on that leg. I can limp, can I? You got any money? No. Well, if you can owe the doctor, you can owe the nurse. What's your name? When it ain't Florence Nightingale. Fina. What is this place? It isn't much, but there's some food there. Nobody will try to shoot at you. I'll be home later, and we'll try to figure out what to do. Do you have any evidence to support that charge, Madigan? I'm telling you to call off Roscoe Blue. Now, what's a Roscoe Blue? Is that a man's name? I'd never hire a man with a name like that. You're barking up the wrong tree, Madigan. You tell Roscoe Blue the contract is canceled. Sorry. I still don't read you. Oh, yes, you do. If Blue gets to that kid, I'll nail him and you. Now, wait a minute. That Dad. goes for you, too, Ivy. You came up with Roscoe Blue. Now both of you are going down with him. Hey, Madigan, that badge don't give you the right to threaten us. File a complaint. You 
like that two-bit cop trying to roust me. Damn right I'll file a complaint. Sid, will you cool it? Don't you listen at all. He knows it was Roscoe. He can't prove nothing. Maybe not yet. We don't need any unnecessary hassles. Cravat would think it was very unprofessional. Yeah? Why don't we just drop the whole thing? Call off Roscoe. Would Cravat let a cop scare him off? Cravat would know when to move and when to play dead. Hey, Hal. You always sweat so much. You just melt when it gets a little hot. Sid, be sensible. Now, Hal, you talk to Mr. Blue, and you tell him to get the work done. Sid. Hal, and you do it. Now. Why don't we go to California? California is a bore. But I can't stay in the city any longer. It's become a sewer. Streets aren't safe. Filth. Collusion. It's just not the same city any longer. It's very depressing. Very. Gentlemen? How? You're fashionably late. Yeah. And you're making a mess of our deal. <laughs> you're, you don't show your panic over the phone half as well as you do in person. How I wouldn't allow one madigan to frighten me that much. Look, the job's too tough. How? I'll tell Sid you called it off. How? I contract. I deliver. We will find the little fellow tonight when the witches come out. What if you just forget about it? I will not forget about it. I have a certain professional pride. It won't be that hard to find one bleeding child. If this wasn't uh, Smokey's brother, he'd forget it. And I'd be on retrial. Smokey. Oh, yes. Oh, you know, he has a personal grudge against the kid's Shut brother. Shut up, Kraft. Kraft talks too much. But good help is so hard to find these days. Look, this is just a job. You better keep your personal grudges out of it. Of course. It's just a job, Hal. And I love my work. But I know I you're forgot him. this character. His name's Roscoe Blue. He's a black male, about 40, and he talks with a phony British accent. Yeah, that's the one. Spot him, but don't pick him up. And look, Johnny, for once in your life, be subtle or you'll scare him off. Okay. Your rights are all wrong. I think you got something there, pal. So how's it going? Lousy. I've checked every emergency clinic and hospital in town. No luck. That kid's so far behind the black curtain by now, it would take radar to dig him out. Yeah. Nothing on Blue? Nothing. So where'd he go from here? Down. Unless I get some special help. Fred? Have a car go to 252 West 129th Street. Pick up a Clara Fix. Bring her in here. Okay. Have you seen a kid with um, a bullet in his leg, about 15? No. We had us a dude here who was shot in the arm. There was no 15. Okay. Well, uh, if you see him, you will let me know.
Uh, this is 1034. Tell Madigan we just made Roscoe Flew at 110th Street, 5th Avenue. I'm looking for someone. Everybody looking for someone. And this is a little more specific than that. A boy, about 15, with a bullet in his leg. Ain't in here. Yet. You know anything about it? I ain't got no shot up, kids. There was a dog got run over. Little black puppy dog. What you want with a boy with a bullet in his leg? I'm gonna wrap him up in red ribbon and put him in the garbage. Just for you. I trusted you! And Billy got shot. I know, I blew it. I'm trying to make it up. And why the hell should I believe you? Look, if I didn't want to help, I'd just let Roscoe Blue kill him. Oh, <laughs> you know, it's... It's hard to trust a white cop. Why should you really give a damn? I don't know. Maybe I can get through to Billy before he turns into another Smokey. All right, are you sure about this black man who shot Billy? I'm sure enough to know that if he finds Billy before I do... Yeah, well, it ain't gonna be easy. But let's go talk to Smokey. Okay. Light of the world! How come you ain't signed the Lord of the Light? Is in me. Well, and in you. Yeah, then yeah, shine, yeah, brother, yeah, shine. Yeah, Let us see you shine. Yeah, shine. Yeah, 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 all right. Here, 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 here. Here. You don't want one, sister? You don't need this? Nah, man. You don't need that woman alone. Do you know who she is? No, no. I am looking for a kid who was hit in the leg bad enough to need a doctor. I don't know, man. You sure? You know what? Try old Doc Pizes. He might be able to help you, you know? Bet? Bet. I don't know where Billy is, but if he run off, he can't be hurt too bad. Are you sure it's Roscoe Blue that done it? I saw him. And how'd you get so tight with this pig? Oh, Smokey, he's all right. He's helping. Roscoe Blue. And why does it have to be Roscoe Blue? And why does it have to be that one? He's trying to get back at me. He'll try and kill that kid to get back at me. Why? Hey, we done some time together once. He tried to make me a punk and I cut him. I cut him good. And hey, you got to find Billy. Well, that's why we're here. Baby, tell us where he'd go. I know where he'd go. Billy is my nephew. And I have to help him. What happened to him? A most unfortunate accident. He was cleaning a gun. Yeah? We get four or five gun cleaners a week up here. I feel very close to him. Blood binds and all, you know. It's family service. Maybe he can get us a Ford Grant. Well, he hasn't been here. Did you try the hospitals? Yes. Well, we have a lot of work to do, so if that's all... I'm sure you do, my dear. I'm sure. If I run into your nephew, I'll let him know you're worried. But don't let me disturb you. Mission to the inner city and all. <laughs>
the job. Reckless parking. Suited by a strung out tailor. Mm. Well, can I see? Sure. He can't see you, though. He's got compresses on his eyes. Well, what's the matter? Eye irritation. He'll be all right, though. I'm going to take him off in a couple of days. Uh -huh. and then he can go home. He's right in here. Oh, thank you. Uh, 
Who's there? Hi, kid. Who are you? Just a guy who admires what you did. Are you a fireman? Nope. Police. You the guy that's been chasing me? Yeah. Well, he got me. That's right. I'll see you, kid. Use one. I'm all right. Come on over here. You, uh, you ever have much to do with cops? No. How about court? You ever been in court? Hey, why are you trying to jive me? Well, let me ask you something. Suppose a kid pulled a stick up, then gave the money back. Then he saved the little kid in the fire, then he turned himself in. Had a cop testify for him. Yeah. What do you think a court would make of that? I don't know. Come on, get in here. Where are we going? Where you want to go? I thought I'd drop you off at Tina's. You, you mean you're not busting me? No. I don't get you. Well, if I busted you, you wouldn't be able to tell the judge you turned yourself in, would you? I got you $30. Where are you going to go? I don't know. You shouldn't walk on it so much. The cop that was chasing me ain't chasing me no more. The guy who was shooting at me is in a big slam. I don't know. You going anywhere? No. I might not be around for a while. But it, when I get things going in Canada, I could send for you. OK. But what are you going to get in Canada? More of this. Depends. If you can't make any of this stick, I'll be out before morning. No, I don't think so. I'll be out before you get off duty. I'm afraid not, friend. In fact, if you don't name the man who put out the contract on Billy Fix, I got the feeling you'll be dead before I'm off duty. The threats? Come on, Manigan. There's not a cop in the city dumb enough to pull that. Nobody's touched me yet, and nobody will. Yeah, I guess you're right. All we can do is put you in a cell. This one. There's lots of room in here, Rasko. You can't do this. You can't put me in there with him. I want to see my lawyer. I demand to see my lawyer. Wait, wait. I'm waiting, Rasko. What do you want? Now tell me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I said to the general, now we all get together, and this will work out fine. You and me and the army, we all take our share. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I gotta tell you about this general, even a little short man with fairly oh, yeah. Will you all excuse me? Hey, uh, that, that's a little Negro boy looking for a job as a bus boy. You tell him no thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we used to wear these these uh, pearl handled pistols, and you know, quick draw man he was. You know, he walked down behind the the battalion there, marching along, tall but he's very short, you know. See, <laughs> Mr. Ballinger. Later, come back later. Now. Can it wait, Madigan? No, it can't wait. You're under arrest, Mr. Ballinger. And you, Ivy. Conspiracy to commit murder. You gotta be kidding. No, I'm not kidding. We have a signed statement from one Roscoe Blue. Explain their rights to these gentlemen. Take them downtown. Yeah. At this point, my cravat would get an expensive lawyer. 
Sid. Sid, I don't understand it. What is happening here? Dorothy, shut up. What kept you? 